So let's see some more examples of writing list procedures in Scheme. The next procedure we're going to write is SumList, and SumList takes a list as a parameter and produces the sum of that list. So the structure of this particular function will be similar to what we've seen previously. However, instead of a cons at the end, we're going to use the addition operator because we want to return one value, not a list. So our base case, when we have the empty list, we're going to return zero because the sum of the elements in the empty list is zero. Our recursive case, we're going to add the car to the sum of the cutter. So the way that works, we pass in a list to our function. Then we're going to add two to the sum of the rest of the list. To calculate the sum of the rest of the list, we add three to the cutter of the list. To calculate that, we add four to the cutter of that list. Here we add six to the cutter of that list. And then finally, we add eight to the sum of the empty list, which is zero. So now we undo the recursion and we're going to be adding those values together. So eight plus zero is eight. Six plus eight is 14. Four plus 14 is 18. Three plus 18 is 21. And two plus 21 is 23. So let's take a look at what that looks like in code. So we're going to define some list. It's going to take one parameter. And if the parameter is an empty list, then we're going to return zero. Otherwise, we're going to add the car of the list to the sum of the cutter of the list. Again, we're going to add the car to the sum of the rest of the list. So let's define some lists that we can use. So I'll define list to be one, two, three, four. And I'll define list two to be negative one, two, negative three, four, negative five, six, negative seven, eight, negative nine, ten. And I'll also do one more list. So now let's sum those lists. And so when I add those together, I get 10, 5, which I believe is correct, and 9 for this one, which I also believe is correct. So our next function is going to be called double list. In that function, our base case is going to be, if we have the empty list, we're going to return the empty list. And the recursive case, we're going to multiply the car of the list by 2, and we'll actually write a helper function to do this for us. Then we're going to make a recursive call on the cutter of the list. So we're going to double everything in the rest of the list, and then we're going to add two times the car of the list to the front of that result. So first, let me define my helper method, and then I'll write my list method. So define double list to be a function that takes one parameter, and if that's an empty list, we're going to return the empty list. Otherwise, we're going to cons double of the car of the list with a recursive call on the cutter of the list. And let's write our test code. And when we run this, we get an error because we're missing parentheses here. So now we run this and that looks about like what we would expect. So now let's combine these two methods. So we're going to sum the double of the list. So we're going to combine the two previous approaches. We're going to modify the car before we combine everything in the list using the addition operator. So we're going to define sum double list to be a function that takes one parameter. And if the list is empty, then we return zero because the sum of an empty list is zero. Otherwise, we're going to add the double of the car of the list to the sum of the doubles of the rest of the list. So let's run this and test it. And I left out the I, which is a hazard of always using LST as a parameter name. And when we run this, you can see we get 20, 10, and 18, which is twice what we had before. 
Now it's possible that you're thinking, hold on a second, we have something that doubles the list and we have something that sums the list. Can we simplify our code? We have something that doubles every element in the list and we have something that sums an entire list. So can we put those together? And the answer is yes. We actually don't need to write a recursive method to do this because we have something that doubles the list. This returns a list where everything is doubled and then some list could then add everything together that's in that list. We'll define better sum double list. Still, we'll take one parameter and we're going to sum list double list of list. So let's copy this original test code and then we'll just copy the new function name. There we go. So if we run this, you can see we get the same result. This is slightly more inefficient because we're calling multiple recursive methods on the list. However, from a code standpoint, you can see that this is much simpler and much clearer. Okay, so suppose we want to write a method to add two lists together. And we're also going to handle the case where the lists aren't equal. And when we add the elements of these lists in a pairwise fashion, the first elements together, the second elements together, and so on, we should get 96513. So the structure of this function is as follows. We're going to have two base cases. The first base case is going to be if the first list is null, then we return the second list. If the second list is null, we're going to return the first list. If they're both null, well, then we'll return, then this case will match and we'll return list two, which is null. And so all three of those cases are handled where one or the other or both lists are null. That's our base case. And our recursive case is we're going to add the cars together and then we're going to add the coders together using our same add list function. So this will work in this case because they both have the same amount. So after we add each one together, we'll get the result we expect. What about if the lists don't have equal sizes? Well, in that case, we add the first elements together, one and eight to get nine, the second elements together, two and four to get six. Then there's nothing left in list two. So we'll just return list one, which gives us the elements three, four there. If the first list is shorter, again, we add one and eight to get nine, two and four to get six. And then the first list is empty. So we return whatever's left in the second list, which is two and nine, giving us this result. So let's see what that looks like in code. And we'll say that this is pairwise because again, we're gonna add the first elements together in the second elements. So our add list function is gonna take two parameters, list one and list two. And then there's gonna be three conditions. The two base cases, if list one is null, we're going to return list two. And if list two is null, we're going to return list one. And then a recursive case, we're going to cons the sum of the cars And if you're wondering how we know that these two car operations will work, well, if we pass in two lists, we'll only get to this condition if neither is null. And so they'll both have a car since every non-empty list has a valid car, which would be the first element of the list. And we're going to cons that sum to a recursive call where we add the two cutters together. So I'm going to paste in some test code here. Here we're adding 1, 2, 3, 4, and 10, 20, 30, 40. Here we're adding 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 4 ones. Here we're adding 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6 ones. In fact, just to make it different, let's make it 7 ones. So let's run this, and you can see that we get the sums that we would expect. So the final function that we're going to do in this video is going to be numList. Now numList is going to generate a list of numbers up to n. So if we want to find numList of 4, we're going to find the numList of 3, the numList of 2, the numList of 1, and 0, and then we're going to put those things back together. So here we combine the empty list of 1 to get the list with 1 in it, and then we combine that with 2, with 3, and 4. Now the question is, how do we do that? So we have the empty list in one, we want to combine them together. Well, if we use cons, we're going to get this pair, which is definitely not what we want. So what about append? If we append these together, 
one isn't a list, so we get an error. So we need to first make a list out of one, and then we can append them together. So the structure of our program will look like this. We're going to have a base case, which will be zero. If we, get, if we have a num list of size zero, we're going to return the empty list. In our recursive case, we're going to make a list up to n minus one, and then we're going to append that with a list with just n in it. So to implement this, we're going to define num list, and it's going to take one parameter. And if n is less than one, then we're just going to return an empty list. Otherwise, we're going to append a recursive call on n minus one, and then we're going to make a list out of n, append those two things together, and we should have our result. Actually, let's try negative two here to see what would happen. And then we'll say a num list of 20. And then we run our code, and you can see it generates a list of the numbers up to n. Okay, we'll have some more videos with more examples. Again, hopefully eventually you'll start seeing these patterns that repeat themselves. We've already seen a lot of them. We'll see a few more. But for the most part, a lot of scheme list procedures share that same pattern, where we have some base case, and then we have some recursive case that we put things together in some way. It doesn't usually take a lot of code, but you do want to think through how to generate the appropriate solution.